Question for you. Do teachers in a classroom have unlimited free speech? Do they have First Amendment right to say anything they want in a classroom? To do anything with their freedom of speech in a classroom? If you watch this channel, you already know my answer. And it is no. Of course they don't. That is why they're not teaching intelligent design as fact. That's why they're not teaching Bible verses or the Quran as fact. That is why they're not teaching that the earth is flat. That is why they're not teaching a whole host of things, even if privately they believe these things. They're entitled to their opinions. They're entitled to speak ad nauseum about those opinions privately on their own time, in their own space, etc. But once they set foot in a classroom, they're hired speech and they have to abide by the rules of their employment contract, their employer, et cetera, whatever it is, just like I would have to at any job that I had. So it is unfortunate that I have to come down against the three teachers in Loudoun County who are suing this district for forcing them to use the preferred pronouns of trans and non-binary students. I understand their frustration. I do feel for them. If, and I don't know the details of the situation, if they are saying, I'll use English pronouns, for example, they, them, or he, him, and she, her, as you see fit, student, then I'm, I'm on their side still. I don't think they should be compelled to use words that are not English. I think changing an employment contract to ask you to speak a foreign language on the fly at the behest of a student is going to set a terrible precedent for students to bully teachers and each other into doing all kinds of ludicrous things. It is still a school. The primary English language, sorry, in the school is English. And it is perfectly reasonable to expect the teachers to use proper English when addressing the students. So if this is about not using their preferred pronoun, but still using English pronouns, if the teachers are okay with that, but they want to be called Zizem or Tree or Kitty Self or something that is not English, I'm still going to side with the teachers. I think expecting them to just, you know, dance like little trained monkeys to speak whatever foreign language students want them to speak when addressing them, you know, possibly changing it on the fly is disruptive to the classroom and to learning. So I'd really need to know the details, but if it's strictly, I don't want to use the pronoun that goes with the gender they say they are, or goes with their non-binary status, like they, them, I, they're probably not going to win because they don't have that level of free speech. That that might be pushing it too far. So it'll be an interesting case to follow. But I, in the Twitter back and forth, I just had to remind people who are saying this is compelled speech and you know the ACLU in Virginia is coming down on the side of compelled speech. They are coming down on the side of the district and saying they filed a, an amicus brief, brief in support of of the defendant, the school district, that is fighting this, you know, request for a temporary injunction. They came down on the school district side and people were saying, they're just coming down on the side of compelled speech. It's a dicey one. As some people have said, it's nuanced. Yeah, it is. We'd need to know the details. Uh, which pronouns do they not want to use? But if it's just that they don't want to use, you know, the one the trans girl wants them to use, they don't want to say she, her, to a person who is biologically male, for example, they're probably going to lose because the district has spoken. It is pro-trans. It is This would be considered discrimination, at least insofar as their employment contract is concerned. As far as the Constitution, I don't know because I don't know how far the case law has gone in terms of protecting the rights of trans individuals, especially those who have not actually transitioned. So if we're talking also about students who are gender fluid, for example, like the one who raped the girl in a Loudoun County school, like that one, that biological male who walked into the woman's or the girl's bathroom and raped a girl because he felt like a girl that day, or so he said, um, and then did it again in a different school. 
Um, if we're talking about, you know, that kind of thing, I'm not so sure that's protected yet. I, I think there might need to be a little more commitment. Even, you know, I, I don't know the case law, so somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I have a feeling in order to have your rights protected as a protected class, you have to actually commit to being part of that protected class. You can't, you know, I am on a Tuesday, I'm not on a Monday. I mean, you know, it's not really sure about that. Okay. Um, but they're claiming it's discrimination. That's their position. And it'll be interesting to see what happens because the teachers do not have this, you know, right to say whatever they want or right to not say whatever they want on the job. I decided to make this video about this though, not because of the case or anything about it, because honestly, I, it's not that interesting to me relative to the other Loudoun County fiascos, plural. Uh, it's a weird hill for the teachers to die on. I'll be honest with you. All the things that are going on there, not reporting of crimes and the other kinds of compelled speech. Like think of all the things the teachers in Loudoun County are being compelled to teach these kids. The Virginia equity plan alone is chock full of things. I assume these same three teachers don't want to be teaching. To what degree are they fighting on behalf of their students' minds when it comes to learning you no know, English or history or reading or writing or anything else? Uh, are they fighting the SEL being put in the, in the school? Are they fighting having to violate the privacy of their students? Because I'm not seeing that. So it's a, it's a weird hill to die on that. I personally don't want to use the preferred pronoun of this individual child. So I'd really like to know, like, what pronouns are we talking about? But it's just still weird. So I can't, I'm not, I'm not making the video because this in and of itself, like, is compelling to me. What's compelling to me is the hypocrisy of any branch of the ACLU to take up the cause of students being discriminated against in the classroom when William Clark was left high and dry by the ACLU when he was absolutely discriminated against. He was forced to say things that violated his deeply held beliefs, something the ACLU used to defend, right? The First Amendment, even if they didn't agree with you. If they would never in the past have stood for a teacher saying, you will disavow your Christian faith as oppressive in this class, or you will not pass the class. You will admit to being a misogynist simply because you were born male or you will not pass this class. You will admit to being a white oppressor because you can pass as white because your melanin content is insufficient to pass as anything else, even though you're biracial. You will do these things or you'll be suspended. First of all, you'll fail the class. And when you fail the class, you won't graduate. And these weren't idle threats. They followed through because he refused to go along with their compelled speech. But where was the ACLU for William Clark? Where's the ACU to this day for William Clark? At any point, I'm calling on you, ACLU of Nevada or anywhere in this country, the main office of the ACLU. I'm calling you out. His case is solid. Okay, there's there's no question of, you know, we don't have to sit and debate what gender he is or isn't. We don't have to debate the level of his commitment to being male. We don't have to debate whether he's actually using English words to refer to himself. We don't need to debate whether the teacher is or is not entitled by law to force him to speak things, to say things that violate his deeply held beliefs and his own rights, his civil rights as a human being, never mind an American. We don't have to question any of that. That That's like blatantly obvious. The evidence is crystal clear. You can go read it for yourself. The lesson plan is clear. The slides are all there, what he was required to do and say. They don't even deny it. They've already been through enough court that they haven't denied it. They just tried to fight the whole, like, 
letting him graduate because to them, like you have to take and pass the class to graduate. That's our requirement. Yeah, okay. But you can't fail someone to suspend someone because they won't say these things. But they don't de deny demanding that he say these things. They just thought it was it was okay. So they're not even denying the facts of the case. And where are you, ACLU? This happened well over a year ago. Where are you? They need they need support. They need money to take this all the way to defend all students' rights. At any point in time, by the way, these students that you're defending against discrimination could be told, if things flip around, power structure is different than it is today, they could be told to disavow their trans nature. They could be told there's no such thing as being non-binary. They could be told they have to take and pass a science class that requires them to affirm, are you ready, that there are only two biological sexes and that reproduction requires both of them. That happens to be scientific fact. It does. I really actually long for the day that occurs and you have the unenviable task of deciding which side you're going to represent the teacher teaching scientific fact or the student who says you can't compel me to say that which I don't believe in it is my deeply held belief that's not true because y'all have taught me that since I was in kindergarten that it's not true that there are only two biological sexes good luck on that one because that's coming but here we are today we're today, 2021, and William Clark is still sitting there having not received justice. He got his diploma eventually, but he has not received justice in terms of that compelled speech. That has not been determined by a judge. They can still go and do it to someone else. They probably are doing it to someone else because that there no judgment has been rendered. And it's going to sit there and other students are going to go through that class and be told the same things. And if their parents don't fight, they're going to have to say, them. they're going to have to say, my religion is oppressive. My race is oppressive. I disavow my family. I disavow. I'm a misogynist. I'm a racist. Whether they are or they aren't. And the ACLU has said nothing and likely will continue to say nothing and certainly isn't ponying up with lawyers and money to defend this egregious violation of William's civil rights, egregious and obvious and well-documented. Pretty easy win. But nope, we're not touching that one. Instead, we're going to take on this likely extremely nuanced case. It's going to get a lot of publicity. We're going to be on the news. We're going to stick our necks out for this. We're going to go against these teachers, these evil teachers, and we're going to make it all political. This formerly nonpartisan organization has drawn a line in the concrete. And they are saying, we are over here on the left. And by left, I mean the political left. The side of the neo-Marxists, the side that would burn the Constitution, the side with Richard Delgado, where freedom of speech and the First Amendment does not exist anymore, where discrimination is perfectly okay, as long as you're discriminating against the right people, or I'm sorry, against the people who are not left. That's where we are. And if this pisses you off, if this kind of hypocrisy pisses you off as much as it does me, because hypocrisy is one of those things, jumps out and hits me in the face. It's kind of like giant balls of hail falling on the pavement and bouncing off and then hit me in the face. That's how easily I see hypocrisy. That's how I'm like, eh. I feel like I'm being bombarded by it lately. And it bothers me a lot, like a lot. It's probably the number one reason I keep making these videos because of all the hypocrisy I see and feel compelled to call out. If it bothers you as much as it does me, or even half as much, there's something you can do. There's something you can do right now to feel like you're sticking it 
to the ACLU to feel like you're at least standing up for the right side of this argument. And I mean the correct one, not the political right one. And that is to give a donation any amount you can afford. A dollar, okay? Or more, whatever. To Gabrielle and William Clark's case. I will put the link down below in the description box. You can go there right now, make a donation. And that will be your way of saying, we are going to step in where the ACLU ought to be standing. And we will form a human chain so long it wraps around the freaking earth. And we're going to show you ACLU and any other groups out there who aspire to being the replacement of the ACLU. I think you know who you are. Another four letters. Starts with F. Ends with air, as in hot air, as in maybe not representing all that you claim to represent. But we're going to form that human chain and we are going, eventually, I have faith, we're going to bring this case to court where it deserves to be, probably a far sight more than this little case, and take a stand against compelled speech for students. Nobody's asking these students, nobody's forcing these students to say they're somebody they're not. They do want to force the teachers to do that, possibly. But as I said before, that's the misfortune of having an employment contract that says you're hired speech and you got to say things you might not want to say. It's just the nature of the beast. But no one, let, let, make no mistake, no one's forcing these students to do anything. So I just wanted to point that out to y'all because this hypocrisy makes me sick to my stomach. And if it does you as well, please go make a donation. Thank you for watching. As always, if you like this sort of content, please consider liking the video, commenting the video, sharing the video, subscribe to the channel pretty, pretty please because it sends a message to people who are lying to you about education in America, that you're not buying it, that you don't believe it, that you'd rather listen to people like me telling you the truth than listen to CNN lying their asses off. So thank you and have a great evening.